Today I'm making a phaser. For this build, I used EVA foam, craft foam, coffee foam, dilithium crystals, putty, paint, super glue, hot glue, cutting tools, sanding tools, safety gear, scissors, razor pens, and a box cutter. First, I'm gonna make a template because some of these parts need to be identical. This will be available linked in comments down below. Then I traced that, flipped it, and then repeated the process. Flipping it will ensure that the pattern is on the inside of the body and therefore will not be visible. I cut those out with a work knife, which I continually sharpened in order to keep the cut clean and uniform. I'm also being careful to make sure that my blade is angled perfectly straight up and down. This will prevent any ridges or depressions from forming in the foam after I join the two sides. Then I cut a rectangular piece for the handle. It's gotta be a lot thinner than the body, so instead of doubling it by cutting two pieces of floor mat foam, I made a copy out of two millimeter craft foam, which chemically is the same stuff. It's all EVA, ethyl vinyl acetate. In case anyone was wondering what that stood for. I don't think I've ever mentioned that in a video before. It barely adds any width. Really, I'm just using it to cover up the texture on the one side of the regular foam. I glued it on. There's a spacer between the handle and the body that doesn't quite match the depth of one or two sheets of EVA foam. So I drew it on from a different orientation and cut it out. Then I cut the emitter barrel. Would that make the phaser a snub nose? This gave me an idea for the handle that would help cut down on the sand work that I would eventually have to do. By cutting the handle so that it's half its actual size, eventual size, and then using foam half cylinder bevels on either end, I could create a perfectly uniform curve to the grip that looks like it has machine-like precision, because for all intents and purposes, it is machine, and therefore save time on aforementioned sanding. You can get these bevels at craft stores, or online, you know, wherever, wherever foam can be found. I weighted that down with machinist blocks as well, while the glue dried. So I went ahead and glued a bevel strip to the front and back, both sides, not all sides. I have to narrate this as if the viewer is blind. That's just, I, I just, I gotta do it. I also added two thin two millimeter strips to either side of the handle, perpendicular to the orientation of the way the phaser would be facing. These will form the grips. You'll notice that I'm using a completed phaser as a guide here, and you may be wondering, why build one when you've already got one? Well, aside from it being the overarching theme of the channel, I show you how to build props, not buy them. <laughs> this original phaser, the phaser that I had is a toy, not a prop. I was using it as a prop while shooting a short film, and the actor dropped it. And being plastic, a catch broke off, and now the smaller phaser doesn't fit into the bigger one. Actors are a destructive catalyst to props. I don't even know how she did that. Y you have to plan for that. So I built out a foam. It's very hard for an actor to break foam, but not impossible. Next, I glued together the two halves of the body and held them in place as the glue cooled down with machinist blocks. While it was cooling, I sanded the emitter barrel as well as the grip adapter over on my belt sander. It's important to wear some kind of dust mask while doing this. You don't wanna breathe this stuff and it, it just, it gets everywhere. By this time, the glue on the phaser body was solid, so I removed the blocks, which did reveal a few imperfections so I cleaned those up on the belt sander as well. You do want to be careful when sanding something that you've hot glued because if any hot glue has snuck out from underneath the seam, the friction of the belt sander is going to reheat up and melt the glue. I mean, it'll all be flat, but then you'll have hot glue in your belt sander belt. And that's very difficult to get out. Oh, you can actually clean a belt sander belt, like all the stuff that's in the grooves, using uh, one of those larger pencil erasers, you know, the, the rectangular ones. And they do make a belt sander clean that's a, just a more a denser rubber specifically for that. But a uh, pencil eraser will work. This has been Shop Tips with William Shakespeare. Then I attach the handle to the body, first by hot gluing the adapter base, and then, because hot glue isn't the strongest substance in the world, I skewer the handle with a toothpick that I also pressed through the base and into the phaser body. Then I secured the handle with super glue. I added a trigger button made from a hole punch off cut. Then I cut an alcove for the heat sink baffles. For the baffles themselves, I traced and cut four pieces of two millimeter foam. Then I stacked them with foam spacers in between for separation. There's this raised detail on the back, which is great because it covers up a seam. For the others, I'll have to use Alex Fast Dry Putty. While that dries, I began work on phaser one. Again, I cut and traced a shape twice in order to get the correct width height. I'm going to say height. Then I glued those together like I did with phaser two. Now that is way too blocky. So I'm going to have to form it into a more rounded shape. I'm going to start by shaving away some of the edges with a box cutter. Now well, more sawing. This is really going to dull out the blade. You're going to want to periodically sharpen the blade of your knife. Using a knife sharpener or a sharpening block. I've shot that action a million times before. This has WD-40 on it, which isn't necessary every time, but you want to, you 
you want to hit with the WD-40 at least once a project. That'd be a good, good metric. I guess it depends on the size of the project. You know, sometimes I'm doing something little like this. Sometimes I'm doing suits of armor. So just keep the scale of the project in mind. And this is going to cut down on the sanding. However, it's never as precise a technique as I'd like it to be. So I did eventually have to take it over to the belt sander to finish the job. Then I cut the pattern off of the back of a piece of scrap foam floor mat very carefully because it's so thin and it's incredibly easy to mess up a cut this thin, especially if you got a dull blade, hence all the sharpening. Then I glued it onto phaser one to simulate the grill. Then I cut a thin slice out of an EVA foam dowel and cut it in half. The two halves will make the dials. I glued them on and there we've got a basic phaser one. I also thought that I should work on some of the remaining phaser two details while I'm at it, such as the emitter. I cut more circles from scrap foam using a wide leather hole punch, but any, any sharpened pipe will do, really. I sliced those into even thinner sections very carefully. I cut the center out of one and glued them to either end of the emitter. Then I glued eight rectangular grips around the outside of the emitter, which were cut from two millimeter craft foam. I glued the whole assembly to the front. Then I made the safety dial for the side out of another hole punch off cut and scrap foam. I always save the off cuts, guys. Jake, you're a hoarder. I know. Shut up, baby. I know it. And then I add strips to the side. Sides. Plural. Both of them. Got it. I say words for a living. Finally, I added the emitter itself, which is just the end of a pen casing. Y you could make it out of foam, but why, you know? Oh, and lastly, for the phaser two dial on the back, I cut a section of an even narrower foam dowel, and then I wrapped a smaller triangular bevel around the edge to make the conical base. Then I glued it onto the phaser, and we're, oh wait, I forgot, phaser one has details. Two little strips on either side, and now we're done, except for the paint job. Honestly, this looks pretty phasery on its own, but it looks super weird if I didn't paint it. I removed phaser one, as well as the baffles, because those are going to be very tricky to paint, and paint everything black with gloss black acrylic latex house paint. I'm trying to be really gentle with the heat sink baffles, because they're really easy to get glued together. I took my time with those, and then skewered them to a piece of foam to dry. Then I painted phaser one gloss black as well. This also got skewered, because it's even more likely to stick to whatever surface it's left to dry on than the baffles. Then I painted phaser two. Only the handle and dial will need to be black in the end, but the silver parts need a black base coat in order for that silver to really pop. In fact, the whole thing will need at least three coats of paint in order to come out looking good. So I just did everything three times. And that's not a bad look either. I'd buy that as a special ops section 31 phaser, you know, in the right context. When the black paint finally dried, I used silver rub and buff, which is a wax metallic finish to make the baffles and phaser one details silver. This product is great in a pinch for weathering machine props, but it's very difficult to get a precise coverage on a totally metallic looking part. So for the phaser two details, I switched to metallic paint. When it dried, I painted the body of the phaser, a sort of dull blue. A convenient design quirk of the phaser is that the handle grips allow it to fit perfectly in this little paint setup. I saw there was a happy accident. So this is the TOS phaser from the 60s. There have been many variants since then, but this design has actually made a comeback in the new Star Trek spin-off series, Strange New Worlds, which is amazing, by the way. It's like the original series with a budget. You know, there have been all these attempts to remake Star Trek, and you know, they're good on their own as their own thing, but just, just the original series with a budget. Just make that show. That's what we've been asking for. Just keep making that show. Dial back Anson Mount's hair though, for real. When that was dried, I glued the baffles in and that was it. That's how to make a phaser. Now I'm ready to boldly go. And now my Kirk cosplay is complete. Well, hang on. Now it's complete. I lost 30 pounds for this joke. Still no abs. Not worth it! Ah, oh, I miss pizza and beer. Thanks for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed this build, then you can subscribe and hit the bell icon to see upcoming builds. Because let's be honest, the subscribe button doesn't do what it used to. And if you actually want to get notified about upcoming builds, then you gotta hit that bell icon. Otherwise, they'll be lost to the infinite scroll of your inbox. Be sure to leave a comment below to let me know what you'd like to see me make next. And lastly, I'd like to thank my patrons, the name's scrolling by, because if I'm being honest, they're the only reason that I can still make these videos. But the algorithm has come down hard on blaster build, mistaking them for fire arms. And even with Patreon, the only thing I can still do are the sci-fi blasters. Because like, like the algorithm, it, it's in AI, it's looking at shapes and trying to determine things. Yeah, you know, there are even Star Trek builds that I'd like to do, but the phasers, they have names with keywords that the algorithm doesn't like. So if you want to control the content that you see and you want to see cool stuff that's not determined by an AI, then consider heading on over to the Patreon page and help out in the endless struggle against the robot uprising. Thanks for watching. Happy crafting. See you later.